Yesterday afternoon, about 4.53 p.m. local time, a large earthquake struck Haiti. It has proved to be devastating. To that end, last night and today, the Pan American Health Organization has been mobilizing a rapid health response to Haiti through the Dominican Republic in response to this severe earthquake that struck close to the nation's capital, Port-au-Prince, an urban city of two million people. The earthquake was measured 7.2 on the Richter scale and has inflicted large-scale damage, including large numbers of casualties and severe damage to hospitals and local health facility facilities, attempting to care for those immediately injured. Damaged health facilities include two major hospitals within the Port-au-Prince area. National health authorities believe there is a serious loss of life. Our immediate health priorities to respond to this crisis include search and rescue of survivors trapped underneath the rubble, treatment of people with major trauma injuries, preventing the infection of wounds that may occur, the provision of clean water and sanitation and food for those in need, control of communicable communicable diseases that may ar arise from the existing conditions. These will be a major concern for the upcoming days. PAHO and the World Health Organization are working with local health authorities, other United Nations agencies, and humanitarian partners to respond to this emer emergency, particularly focused on helping the Haitian government best coordinate the international health assistance uh, to the country. We are also collecting data on the health impact of this earthquake so we can disseminate this data to the humanitarian aid providers. In addition, we are deploying a 12-member team of health experts and logistic logistician experts including specialists in mass ca casualty management, coordination of em emergency health response, and the management of dead bodies. UN buildings, including our own PAHO WHO building, suffered major damage. The main force of the earthquake was felt 17 kilometers southwest of the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. Many homes and public buildings have collapsed. The phone system is not working, and most roads in the infected area are blocked. Neighboring countries in the region are already in the process of organizing humanitarian aid uh, and assistance and search and rescue missions. The condition of the airport is currently being assessed to determine how quickly humanitarian aid can reach the affected area? What is the capacity to accept them? And to put this in perspective, this is the strongest earthquake ever recorded in Haiti along this fault line. Haiti is the poorest country in our hemisphere. It ranks 154th globally on the United Nations Human Development Index. It is a country of extreme poverty and vulnerability. The quake was felt as far away as the neighboring Dominican Republic, where two hospitals in Barahona and Santiago were affected. It could not have come at a worse time. In 2008, Haiti was devastated by four major hurricanes and tropical storms, Fay, Gustav, Hanna, and Ike. They all wreaked ha havoc on the physical and agricultural infrastructure of Haiti. The storms killed almost 450 people at that time, affected a million residents, and left more than 150,000 people living in shelters. We all fear that the impact of this earthquake will be particularly devastating due to the vulnerability of Haiti's people, as I mentioned. Having said that, though, I think it's important that we take the opportunity to focus and try to draw 
on the lessons learned over the decades in responding to disasters around the Americas as well as around the world. In the health sector, one of the most important lessons we have learned over and over again is the importance of hospitals in the aftermath of a disaster. Unfortunately, all too often hospitals become victims of disasters themselves and are unable to provide their services precisely when they are needed most. This is exactly what is happening in Haiti. But it is not, and I must repeat, it is not inevitable. We know that hospitals can be built to withstand the impact of disasters and can be planned and equipped and remain functional after these disasters. The additional cost of building hospitals to be disaster safe is marginal. And so is the cost of retrofitting existing facilities. Most important, these costs are negligible in comparison with the cost of a failed hospital. So PAHO has detailed technical guidance on this, on this and other subjects in response to the disaster, both the structural and functional requirements to build and run safe hospitals. We urge donors and relief organizations to keep in mind the importance of rebuilding Haiti's infrastructure, particularly its hospitals, and to keep them safe from future disasters. Another very important lesson that we've learned from our experience is contrary uh, to what is often reported, sometimes even by so-called health experts, dead bodies do not cause epidemics. Dead bodies do not have a substantial practical threat to the health of the survivors. This is important to understand. It is important because misplaced fears about dead bodies often lead to mass burials, which are also often ill-advised and violate the human rights and mental health needs of the survivors. Everybody wants to know about the fate of their loved ones and to provide them with a proper burial, but this is not always possible but it should not be prevented by the unfounded fears that bodies are a threat to the health and the response in the subsequent days. Another cri critical question, uh, lesson that we have learned uh, is that disaster assistance from donor countries and organizations is best provided on the basis of an on-ground needs assessment. PAHO's first team into Haiti has one of its major responsibilities to provide this ex assessment of the needs of the health sector, exactly what I mentioned. They are, they are doing so as we, as, as we speak in coordination with the Haitian health authorities and other United Nations agencies on the ground. The need for field hospitals may arise as teams assess the damages to local hospitals and health facilities. Their usefulness depends on the time they can become operational in the field. It's within the first 48 hours that the greatest need is for emergency medical care. Search and rescue is also critically important in this first phase. After that, the need is for follow-up trauma, medical, and other routine health care and emergencies. Above all, we ask that all field hospitals should be fully self-sufficient and should not request any support from the affected community because that poten potentially has the risk of uh, drawing upon important efforts and resources targeted at the local survivors. They should complement and facilitate the work of local health services. This is very important. PAHO is helping mobilize assistance from neighboring countries, which we know are in the best position to provide the earliest assistance. So to wrap up, this is a rapidly emerging situation and we don't have all the facts, but we do know that we have to respond immediately and act immediately. We are talking about people, about families, about children, and not just the numbers. People who want to help should donate cash to a reputable relief or faith-based organization. Sending clothing and or food 
is generally not helpful in this uh, immediate uh, response. PAHO has on our website a way to donate through the Pan American Health and Education Foundation to support our efforts in supporting the country and the recovery uh, that we're working on in Haiti. And you can find that information on our website, www.paho.org. With that, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Thank you for your time and attention. My name is Dooley Boutus. I am the Haitian ambassador to the OS. Hello, Jerry Samora, Agence France Presse. Vous préférez un en français ou... Euh, pendant votre discours euh, à la, devant la, la, le conseil permanent, vous avez parlé peut-être dizaines de milliers de victimes. Est-ce que vous avez un euh, une chiffre euh, actualisé euh, Vous avez eu des communications qui, qui vous confirment ça uh, I'm, talk, I'm asking about an updated figure because Ambassador mentioned the figure of maybe tens of thousands of deaths in, 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 in Haiti. I don't know if I... If someone can translate for me et rapidly. Personally, I wanted to be optimistic. I talked to some friends last night. I told them it's not possible. We cannot have more than 30,000 30, people die from this earthquake. The number I had today is from the Prime Minister, he believes we should have more than 100,000 people die. Personally, I think it's too early to say that. I prefer to wait. And probably in two or four days, we'll be able to know how many people died from uh, this earthquake. I can add to that. Um, communication on the ground has been very, uh, very, very difficult. In some cases, uh, our office cannot talk uh, because of the landline situation uh, to other UN offices or Ministry of Health. Um, the UN central uh, office, an eight-story building, uh, fully collapsed. In fact, killed the leader there. So communication is very difficult, and at times we actually know more here than people on the ground. So, so trying to quantify exact number of deaths or, or something more accurate is very, very difficult at this first 24 hours. Do you have casualties you personally? That's what I'm saying. It, it's, it, it's, it's, early. it's too early. It's too early. Can I just follow up on that? Uh, sir, you said last night you thought it could not exceed 30,000. Is that no, what I understood exactly, you to say? Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Uh, how many people from the PAHO is in the ground, and what kind of resources have you sent to, the, to this country? Currently, there are five international staff on the ground as we speak, and there's a team of 12 uh, experts that I mentioned that are uh, in, in travel status uh, as we speak. There's also a number of national consultants, uh, local Haitians that work for the Pan American Health Organization that are on the ground as well. I, at this point, could cite some examples of, of different um, activities that are being conducted um, by uh, neighboring countries and actually countries from around the world. Uh, we know from uh, Brazil that there are three jets with approximately 21 tons of equipment on its way to uh, country. Um, Canada has uh, offered donations for immediate use in the, in the way of money, as has the U.S. Guyana is another country that's offered uh, money. Uh, Chinese Red Cross, um, France is sending planes with equipment and personnel. Uh, Spain has also um, sent planes uh, with surgical teams to respond to the local situation. So there's been a, a, f a fairly uh, large and rapid response uh, from our 
partner countries and, and agencies. Is there a way to tell what part, what percentage of the city itself has been affected? Is that visible at all from satellite photos or anything of that nature? Personally, I don't know. But according to a lot of information we received from Haiti, I have the impression we have a lot of problems in Port-au-Prince, Pétionville, and Delma. Probably Carrefour also. But we don't have too many information from Carrefour. Uh, what they call metropolitan uh, region. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If I understand, we have also some problems in Jack Mel, in the southwest of uh, Port-au-Prince. Hi, Lisa Chin, ABC News. Uh, you spoke briefly about field hospitals. Um, I'm wondering how soon you think that uh, field hospitals will be up and ready to operate throughout the city. Thank you for, for your question. Um, that's an important uh, management issue that um, the sooner they operate, the better off, obviously. The other critical element to that is that they are self-sustaining, so that they're not drawing out valuable resources on the ground. Uh, I do know that the Argentina has a hospital, I've heard uh, through channels this afternoon, that's on the ground functioning. And uh, one of their representatives actually came to a building that PAHO manages that has um, medical supplies, the PROMES building it's called, where we also store vaccines for the country as well. So I do know th of that specific example. The, f the, the, the operability when they land uh, and are unloaded from the plane is, is uh, in module fashion always helps too. That they could just roll it out, um, that's the best way. And, and so just to follow up, is, is that something that you are coordinating with different NGOs, with countries? I mean, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around how, who is going to operate each of these field hospitals? Is it a country? Is it an NGO? Are they going to come in, yeah. you know, sort so of do a mash kind of a thing? That's a great question. Um, and that's par part of the Pan American Health Organization's role to coordinate the response from not only within country but from external partners. So this team that's on, on uh, there now is doing the beginning uh, work of the needs assessment. Um, having too much at one time when say for example the airport can't handle it uh, can actually cause more problems. So that coordinating role is critical and for that reason we have a emergency operating center that we manage and uh, our staff there in the emergency operating center communicates almost on a hour or if not minute to minute basis to, to our partners and countries requesting uh, information, uh, requesting assistance with their providing assistance to the country. So that, that's a great question and that's what we're, we're doing. It's very similar to what we did with the pandemic H1N1 uh, response last year. Do you know, have any um, planes landed with rescue teams, with search and rescue teams, or with medical teams? You mentioned the Swedish, uh, uh, I believe the Swedish team, uh, Argentina, Argentina team. Have, have, do you know, is the airport functioning enough to receive aid flights? According to some information we have today, the airport is functioning now. Uh, they are not going to receive a plane from American Airlines, but uh, all countries who want to send to send an in uh, to Haiti help, they are going to uh, land to the airport. Has, has that started? Have they started? Uh, I think they started today. But, but you you blocked any passenger planes uh, of non-aid people, right? What I heard. Okay.
Ambassador, if I may, I want to pass on a question from Rob Stein of the Washington Post who asks if you can clarify what you said with respect to the estimate of deaths. Did you say you feared there were as many as 100,000 or you thought there were 30,000? He didn't understand exactly what no. you said. My position is simple. I told you I want to be optimistic. I refuse to accept we have more than 30,000 people who died in Haiti. It's my dream, my wish for my country. But other people believe we have more uh, people who died in Haiti during the earthquake. Some people think we have more than 100,000. Now we don't know how many people who died from this airquake. We don't know. We need to wait.